What's happening, Panditos? Peter Von Panda here. Hey, I get a lot of questions because I have both uh, uh, watches from Shinola and the Detroit Watch Company about um, what are the differences, what do you like better, you know, that kind of thing. And I thought I would um, say they're just uh, different types of companies and different types of watches. Um, but I thought I have some uh, fairly specific call-outs of uh, about what make them different and so I thought I would highlight the differences between the watches as opposed to the feature set of the watches which you can see in in other videos so first of all um, just talking about the company I've got two watches here Runwell 47 millimeter and the um, the Detroit watch company it's the uh, 1701 uh, launch edition here and Different types of watches. One thing I want to throw out here is that neither of these have the original watch band. So I have replaced the watch band on both of these to a uh, watch band that I prefer for these watches at this point in time. So don't uh, judge these bands on what you get from, from either company. Um, first of all, the companies themselves. Shinola and Detroit Watch Company, I think, would both... Uh, happily use the term startup, but they are very, very different in terms of companies. There's no doubt in my mind that Shinola is more of the Goliath and Detroit Watch Company is more of the David. That doesn't mean that they are in conflict like David and Goliath. Uh, and in fact, the only reason I have the Detroit Watch Company watch is because Shinola shared a link when they were originally launching. And if you go to the Detroit Watch Company Facebook page, they have a lot of pictures of owners wearing watches, lots of references and links. So um, clearly, in competition, but in a healthy and collaborative competition spirit because they are certainly not treading on either one's feet. I would say this uh, Shinola, even though they both have been started up and are kind of are startups, Shinola is much more of a mass producer and kind of a quickly uh, growing um, mass market brand as opposed to what I would call Detroit Watch Company, which is much more of a micro producer, kind of like a uh, craft beer company. And I believe, you know, Patrick Ayub is um, maybe the only one actually assembling these. Uh, and so all of the watches are done by an individual, whereas this has definitely assembly line processes. They have much uh, bigger retail partnerships. You can find these in Barney's and uh, Nordstrom's and all over uh, and a lot of other retailers. And they can produce just an extraordinary number of these. I want to say that of the Detroit Watch Company watches, only a thousand or so have been released, uh, which shows you kind of the scale. Whereas Shinola, I believe, has something like four or 500,000 piece capability per year. So clearly a big, big difference there. Um, the, the, so that's really kind of uh, indicative of the company. And, and because of the Shinola scale, they have a variety of different models. They have a variety of different shapes, sizes, colors. They have a, a much wider product offering. You can find something really for almost any taste. Whereas the Detroit Watch Company only has um, the Aviator and then this 1701 model um, and a couple of different variations of them, but they're they're kind of built on the same chassis. They are kind of uh, different models of the same <clears throat> workhorse. You, you kind of call it a, um, um, you know, platform crossover in the automotive world where uh, a number of cars are kind of made with the same underlying um, um, parts, but are kind of dressed up differently. So that's that's kind of the difference here. And then I would also say the audience is different. Um, you know, what's interesting is right now because of uh, interest in Detroit and Detroit watches, there is a lot of overlap in this audience, but I don't think that it would necessarily persist um, fully because they're just different types of companies. But a lot of people who have Detroit watch company watches will have Shinolas. That's kind of a all Ravens are Blackbirds, not all Blackbirds are Ravens. I think most Shinola clients, customers would not know about Detroit Watch Company nor have their watches, one, because they're more rare, but because Shinola is kind of uh, something of a hipster company with a lot of youthful following right now. You know, and people up to like Bill Clinton who are just kind of supporting um, novel, industrious Detroit brands. All right, that's kind of going into a lot of the detail, and that's just my commentary, and, and the, these companies can certainly develop over time, and this may not be topical uh, or timely later, but that's just kind of what, what I'm thinking. So you, you have much more of a niche, you know, this is kind of more of an Aston Martin type of thing if you're into sports cars, whereas the Shinola brand is kind of much more of the Chevy Corvette if you're into sports cars. So, um, you know, differences in the company and the, the watches in the audience. The, the other thing here is specifically about the watches, heft and mass. So, you know, they, the 47 millimeter versus 44 millimeter case, they are both large watches. They aren't, neither of them are oversized watches, but you get um, more, I think, uh, heft and mass and um, 
and kind of durability with the Shinola watches kind of across the board. For one, one, the cases are very thick. They're not that, um, are very thick in construction. So you've got a big, wide, curved bezel here, um, you know, with a lot of meat in the case. There's probably three or four millimeters of uh uh, case material all the way around before you even get to the crystal the um, the case itself top to bottom is not very thick so it it actually wears against the wrist uh, pretty nicely so one of the things here that I'll show out to, to, to uh, contrast with the Detroit watch company is that it will fit under a cuff of a sleeve and a shirt pretty well and so you can make really make this a daily wear the other thing that's different here is that the crystal it's a double curve crystal so you i believe so you don't get the distortion um of the watch face by when you look at the crystal let me rub down the crystal there a little bit for you and so it's uh you get a, a nice undistorted view of the the dial um but because it's a curved crystal it's pretty thick has a lot of weight heft and it just you know it feels like a premium watch when you're holding it i don't i don't have the weight to right off the hand but it's it's a nice compact uh premium feel it's kind of like when the iphone 4 came out you know the iphone 4 was probably an undersized phone compared to a lot of the phones on the market but it had that stainless steel construction when people picked it up especially people who used uh much more plastic cell phones they were like man this is a heavy phone but it's more because it was all compact and its weight was really focused in a, in a small package. So um, it has a very, very nice premium feel to it. Um, nice polish on here and, um, you know, relatively simple. And the big, the big thing here is that from a durability standpoint, it has a quartz Ronda movement. Now these Ronda movements are assembled in Detroit. So the, the raw parts are manufactured in presumably Switzerland and shipped to Detroit and then manufactured on the assembly line there. Uh, but Quartz movements are much simpler, you know, 60 or 70 parts, but they're much more durable. They keep very reliable time, but you need to replace the battery. So the um, this is something of kind of a an everyday watch. You can really bang it around. In fact, I've had uh, one of my Shinolas get badly, badly beaten up. I sent it back to Shinola to do repair. They basically rebuilt it, you know, and a company that has a lot of those parts that can be done uh, pretty quickly uh, because, you know, you're not building a lot of custom parts. Um, heft and mass is a little bit different here. These watches actually might be pretty uh, similar in size. This one is a little narrower case, um, you, but it doesn't feel, one, I think because top to bottom here, it's, it's, it's much thicker, so it doesn't feel quite as dense. It feels actually, despite how big it is, and despite how kind of how much it protrudes from the wrist because it's a the diameter is a little smaller but the height is higher it's not going to fit under a cuff of a sleeve as well um but because it's it kind of feels dimensionally like a, its volume is a little larger than the shinola even though they might be the same size it just doesn't feel um as dense as as hefty as massive and i actually think it might it's it is a little lighter as well so that's going to also do it and here the it's where um the details are are going to stand out a little bit so you see on the shinola you know big numerals big hour and minute markers um nice big hands lots of bold statement not a lot of detail and intricacy aside from this the sub dial numbers here and kind of maybe the lightning bolt but on the detroit watch company face lots of little detail you know um, uh, a couple different levels to the dial, the sunken sub dial, the sunken power reserve meter, uh, the raised uh, bevel on, on the inner dial uh, around the uh, hour numerals, um, a little bit of beveled edge here um, on on the bevel itself, the um, uh, some some like flute lines on the uh, lugs, um, you know this gear type of uh, um, uh, pattern on the 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 crown. You know an inlaid logo here you know and it's just um and even the back you know nice uh you worry you wouldn't see this very much too but um even things like where the uh, the lugs meet the uh the watch you know there's just a little bit of distinctive uh shaping so just a lot of little detail a very fine printing even on the minutes um you can see that every fifth minute is uh printed on there and just uh, a, a lot more thin, delicate type of uh, theme to it, and a much more classical, uh, elegant style. Whereas this just uh, this watch tends to be a little more 
say a little more sporty, a little more casual, um, where this says a little more formal. And so again, it's it's a little Aston Martin-ish versus Chevy Corvette here as well. But um, you know, they just are kind of different. They're definitely different style watches, but they kind of uh, print a little differently and, and kind of appeal to a little different person. Um, the, the, the Detroit watch company watches I say are going to be a little more boutique-y, um, not a true bespoke watch, but, um, the, so the Shinola is going to be kind of a little more of the, uh, a common watch. And I see them, I don't live in Detroit anymore, but I see Shinolas a lot these days. I mean, um, it's kind of funny that, uh, you kind of think of them as still a niche, a small brand, but they have really done a fantastic job of marketing, getting their name out there, and just being on the wrists of really high-profile people and getting a lot of a, a lot of good press. But that's also kind of a different ethos of how these companies were brought up. This was uh, founded by a company, uh, a gentleman that had a lot of watch experience, that had deep, deep pockets, that um, was going to make a success. There was no doubt in my mind when this company came out that they had a business plan and kind of a traditional plan to get retailers and um, third parties and partners on board. This is going to, like I said, a micro watch. And, uh, you know, uh, Patrick is very experienced in design and in watches, but this is really meant to be kind of a bootstrapped company. Um, I don't know of any plans. I'd love to talk to Patrick sometime about what his plans for the company are, but, you know, I know they're going to release some more models, but I don't think they, ha they have any ambition at this point of, of mass producing um, uh, to this type of scale that Shinola does. So, uh, you know, there are some other things here. You can kind of see the reflection. I don't know if there's an AR coding on the Detroit Watch Company. If there is, um, I can't really tell, but I believe there is AR coding on the Shinola. Now, I mean, you can certainly see reflections, but um, I believe that's that's a, a, a small difference uh, uh, between them as well. So, you know, just two different styles of watches, and I really love them both. You know, they they I wear them for different occasions, um, but uh, you know, and actually, uh, because they're so different, I actually got these two particularly with the dark face and the uh, the white dial um, because I didn't want them to be to look very similar. Um, and so you've got uh, uh, a big. Uh, um, just nice two contrasting watches the other thing is i just didn't even mention is the movement in the detroit watch company um you know i still have the plastic on the back here uh is uh is a miyota movement it's an automatic movement and that's also a little something that is going to kind of appeal to a different type of person you know so a lot of watch guys don't understand the difference between a mechanical movement like this in an automatic or a a mechanical automatic movement because it's driven by a rotor versus a quartz movement like this you know you just like a watch and you buy it and and i and i praise you for making that decision um the difference is here is that this watch looks a little thinner delicate more precise in in, in my opinion um and the movement uh complements that by having a movement that winds up that uh, works when it's uh under on your arm being moved around when the rotor's moving um, I'm just going to kind of wind up the movement here, and uh, you can see that it's getting, the mainspring has enough power. The power reserve indicator is going to go up the more I wind this. That second hand is obviously your first indication that the movement is working. Um, but automatic movements are kind of more sought after by really kind of watch connoisseurs for the most part. Uh, it doesn't mean they're superior in any way, and in fact, it usually makes them a little more delicate because they don't, you know, if they don't have built-in shock protection, um, you can't do as many activities without affecting the movement. Um, if you're not winding them a lot or if they're not on winders at night, they can lose time. They're usually a little less accurate as, as well, but um, you wouldn't use these for um, kind of outdoor activities a lot because of the, um, you know, as opposed to having 70 pieces driving an electrical movement, you have maybe a few hundred, a couple hundred or a few hundred pieces driving very, very delicate um, uh, springs and uh, moving pieces. So um, these types of watches are usually a little bit more for uh, dress occasions as as opposed to a quartz movement, which you'll see in kind of more more everyday watches. Uh, and, the, and the cost is, is 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 different there too. Um, as far as I understand, Detroit Watch Company gets assembled movements from Japan. These are Miro movements. I believe they're going to use some Swiss-based movements at some point. Uh, I think in maybe their next series. Um, but you know, the funny thing is these watches are actually very similar in price, uh, but there are some pretty big differences, and it's kind of up to you to determine what's right for you. Um, 
Now, a lot of people give heck, and I'm going to call out some haters here who say, oh, it's not an American-made brand. It doesn't say American-made. It says Detroit Built, which kind of almost means nothing. But, you know, the parts are brought over and the, the Rhonda movements are assembled here. So there are American assembly line workers building these watches, no doubt. Um, I'm not saying that the ore has to be mined here and everything has to be stamped here. Um, you know, it's just, it's not cost effective. You know, when you're talking about a $500 to $1,000 watch, you have to make some efficiency, find some efficiencies in your manufacturing process. And just like Patrick has to with this watch, you know, I believe the movements are assembled uh, in Asia and then brought here as assembled movements and he installs them. Um, I think some of the, the these pieces, like the original watch band, I think came from Germany. Uh, I don't know where the dials and the, the cases are pressed and all that. But, you know, he does the final assembly in Detroit you know so you just you can't really make these pure claims um, you know it's like American built cars or American made clothing you know I mean so much of uh, the inputs come from a variety of places so I don't really fault anyone for that and, and, and the difference is you get a watch in a price point that's affordable as opposed to if you want to um, you want to smelt your ore here in the Midwest and in Indiana refineries and press out these cases in the, 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 the factories in Detroit and polish them in um, Ann Arbor and have everything assembled by uh, uh, Michiganders. You know, you're probably looking at a $20,000 watch in the end, um, which is going to be comparable to, uh, you know, which may be inferior to any of the... Uh, the the more mass available Swiss watches. So you just you still have to keep cost um, and uh, manufacturing, uh, you know, considerations in play when you're when you're starting up a company. I think both of these companies have done a really admirable and uh, respectable job about kind of capturing the essence of Detroit, but not necessarily being beholden to absolutely literal definition of of made in detroit so um great watches shinola.com detroitwatchco.com check them out uh great watches and uh, i really like them both but they are definitely different questions or comments throw them in there and the panda will get back to you peter von panda out